Hey Lighthouse, <laughs> welcome to a beautiful Sunday of worship, or whenever you're watching this, I pray that you are in a place of rest and pause. I'm here with my wonderful cousin, almost like a brother, Vince, pastor in San Diego. I'll say a little bit more about him in a moment. But like we always do when we begin worship, we orient our hearts to God. We, as Jesus, um, as we see in the, in the Gospels, he would lift up his eyes to heaven as that kind of, here's what we're doing. We're connecting with God. And so we're going to open up with prayer and that is saying that this space is intentionally by us being made sacred, even though it's always, always sacred by God. So uh, let me do that. And then uh, we're going to have a wonderful conversation today. And I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Father, thank you so much for life, mm -hmm. for rest, the rest that we have entered into because of what you have spoken that began the voice being spoken over your son in the waters and that voice that echoed out in his life that was incarnated and ultimately gave, gave way to the most beautiful resurrection life that all of us now are participating in. And we celebrate that today. We honor you and we declare that this is your day, a day of salvation, a day of transformation, a day of healing. We just pray that uh, our hearts would be geared toward you and that we would, our ears would be tuned in to what you're saying and that in hearing you speak, we would be transformed as well into the image of your son. And we ask all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Whew. We are in, don't be jealous, hold this with a holy reverence. We're in Maui right now. Yes, my, we are. Uh, my cousin came over here to spend some time uh, with, with Deborah and I, and he came with his wife, Nancy, and they've been here for about a week. And I didn't want to miss this opportunity just to hear his, his voice and how God speaks through him mm. and, and is working through his life. And, of course, I've known Vince my whole life. Because you my have, whole life, for sure. Yes. You're, well, not my whole life. <laughs> your whole life. Because I am just a smidgen older than you. A few months. A <laughs> few months. Um, and uh, uh, actually, I was at the, at the hospital out in the waiting room when he was born. As a, I must have been 12 or 13, I think, at the time. Somewhere around there. One of my favorite pictures from my childhood is that picture of you holding me as like a little, little baby. Yeah, you're barely out of the hospital, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was horrified. I thought, oh God, if I drop him, will he break? Yeah. <laughs> and then he dropped me. And, <laughs> and he's never been the same. Never been the same. <laughs> um, but I have a, an enormous amount of respect for Vince and then your uh, sharing pastor, co-pastor, Kenny as well. The Reverend uh, Kenneth the Reverend, Lyles. <laughs> the Reverend Kenneth Lyles. Yeah. Uh, they pastor in... in uh, San Diego, downtown, New City, New City Church, um, and has been, I guess it's, I wouldn't say it's a family business, but almost everyone in our family has at some point got involved in ministry. It's so true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, blessing and a curse. Yeah. A blessing <laughs> and a curse. But it wasn't always that way. Um, mm -hmm. There was a journey, of course, anyone that, most people that take that journey, there's a, there's a certain uh, calling or vocation that goes mm -hmm. into that. Like nobody is like, man, I think I'm gonna go make a lot of money being a pastor. I mean, it's I know, true. I know, I know, there's the televangelists and all that, but they are yeah, such yeah. a minority yeah. of, of the, you know, the, the, the corpus of ministry that's out there. And so, it's true. Um, anyway, I wanted to share some time here with, with Vince and with you. And so, um, so here we are. And I think one of the, one of the first kind of um, questions. We've talked about this a little bit. We've thrown this around a little bit, but um, I would just love to hear maybe a little bit about where you are in your life mm -hmm. and then how God is speaking to you, how God is leading you in this season of your, of your life. Thanks, oh, oh and by the way, he's got three beautiful children. Um, they're not here, but they're, they're beautiful yes. kids. They're beautiful uh, at home right now. <laughs> They're yeah. beautifully at home right now. Um, and then his, his wife, Nancy, is like just pure, pure uh, expression of Jesus. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I, I, in fact, when I think of her, I think of, of Christ's hands. 
his mm-hmm. serving hands, mm-hmm. you know, his serving heart. Yeah. And she's got that. I mean, she's she just, um, she embodies it so well. Yeah. Um, and then she's got, I don't know, the way she laughs, I feel like I'm hearing God laugh. It's free. She, it is. Right. She it is life to the fullest. Yeah. And so yeah. it's just an outburst of laughter. And I feel mm-hmm. like God is coming through that. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. like expressing himself to our world. So anyway, um, <clears throat> thank you for being with us. And um, what is, what is God What's the season you're in and what's God speaking to you in this season? Yeah, uh, so much. But um, I want to start by saying thank you. Thanks for uh, letting us, you're welcome, inviting us to Hawaii. (laughs) This has been an amazing trip. Thank you for inviting me to join uh, these wonderful people today. So I'm I'm humbled and honored uh, to be here. Oh man, 20 years, uh, going on 21 years with Nancy. And with these three kids, and we're, we're at this new season of life. We got married when we were uh, 20, and this year we both turned 40. <laughs> oh and so, my God. <laughs> it's a pretty wild, wild <clears throat> thought. I mean, it's a wild thought to think that we got married at 20. Period. I get that. And then also uh, going going into the 40s, into this um, second half of life, as it were, and taking time to pause and mm-hmm. just rethink. Um, uh, give give the Holy Spirit space that often in our busyness we can just kind of we can seek Him for small decisions, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, minute details in our life. But um, I'm really trying to open up space um, in my life, in my heart, in my mind, which is always buzzing continually, to just give Him space to speak and lead mm-hmm. and show us what's next, mm-hmm. what's next, Holy Spirit. So I'm really thankful for this week because that is a big part of this. Next month I go on sabbatical as well. And we're taking an entire month to try to uh, quiet all the noise. Yeah, yeah. And, and create that space and that room for the Holy Spirit to, to speak. So I feel like I'm at kind of in some ways the beginning of a journey. And I feel like God is saying a lot of things, but I'm still processing them. So, I mean, I, I love it. I love it. If I got into all the weeds of it, it would be so messy and it would take all of our yes. time. So yes. I won't do that. But yes. in short, there's a couple of things I've been hearing the, the Spirit whisper. Um, one of them is that I think as you build a life together, like when you're 20 and you get married, you don't have a lot going. You're trying to figure things out for mm-hmm. the first time. And um, you just start kind of grasping at everything and trying to build a life with it. All mm-hmm. the raw materials, and you're trying to build a home. And um, so, <clears throat> what's gotten us this far, by God's grace, has been um, the things that he put in our path and, and that we, we use. But now we're, we're in this space where we get to like kind of pause and rethink um, some things and really create that space to listen. And um, I feel like I have not done a good job of that the first 20 years and that's the first thing I want to do is open up (laughs) space to listen yeah Yeah. Um, there's a book by Henry Nowen I'm reading right now called With Open Hands and it's a book on prayer Mm. and the intro is all about what's in your hands Mm. and learning to let that go to, to open your hands and let the Lord take what you've been grasping onto with clenched fists yeah yeah and first of all, trusting him with the things that are precious to you, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that you can build a life on, but also can, in some sense, almost supplant God as your provider, as the source of your approval, as so many things in your life. And you just hold on to him. Yeah. You can't let go. Because if I let this go, I, what if I let go of my very self? What if I yeah. let go of? What do I have left? What do I have left? Yeah. And so learning to trust him with that and also open up your hands so that he can put into your hands what he what he wants to put there. Yeah. And so I think that's that's a big part of the beginning of this journey. I'm yeah. On. And um, yeah, it's it's kind of a thing that the spirit is teaching me that I'm still processing. And yeah. What do you what do you find? I mean, I, you've been pa- how long have you been pastoring? Man, um, in total, at the churches that I was involved in ministry with, almost eighteen years now. Okay. So, <clears throat> what, pastoring that. A pastor, by the way, a pastor is intentional and conscious quite frequently of this role of connecting with people and connecting with God, yeah. right? There's this Continual. vertical, horizontal. Yep. Let's get people to connect. Let's connect them with God. Let's get people to connect with yeah. God. So 
as you, as you go through that and you see the things that disconnect us from each other and the things that disconnect us from God, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Because we all, we all have it. Like, and pastors, maybe if they're, if they're good at their craft, they are more aware of their own disconnections with God, yeah, right? Their That's own it. shortcomings, their own sins that keep them at a distance and at bay from God. Right. And, they, and then they, because they recognize it so much in themselves, they can help others recognize it, right? And That's then, it. So, yeah. The things that the Spirit is doing in you is often what He's wanting to do through you. Right. And so embracing right. that right. brokenness and, and those disconnections, yeah. as it were, is, is the first step yeah. to being able to help yep. heal so in that category of people that are yearning for God, mm -hmm. longing to connect with God, um, as you've observed this over the past 20 years, mm -hmm. what do you see most frequently as the things that we grasp or mm -hmm. clench our fist around and hold on to? Wow, that's so good. Um, what are they that we typically do, do, do that with? Yeah, man. Well, I think one of the older answers would have been sex, drugs, and rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> that's kind of how we grew up. That's right. That was that was what was constantly uh, addressed and, right. um, and and preached at as though that those are the three sins. Yeah, this is, that's it, man. Um, and then you know, money and power and, mm -hmm. and sex and, and whatever. Um, I think, but those things are they're low hanging fruit. The really obvious things that show up in our lives, right? That, um, as C.S. Lewis would say, all of those things are actually beautiful in the proper context. All of our desires are. Right, um, right. The problem is we have desires that are aimed in the wrong context and the wrong directions. And they're not ultimately for God. So, like, I, I think some of the, the things that, thank God for psychology and for theologians who have learned to apply uh, psychology and mysticism and some of the great traditions in the Christian faith. Um, to some deeper things than the obvious stuff that's just out here, you know, and there's there's things within us that manifest in millions of ways. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to backtrack behind like all the really obvious stuff that's out there to some of the really, really um, not so obvious oftentimes mm -hmm. things within our hearts, I think there are, you know, two or three <clears throat> causal roots mm -hmm. that all that stuff grows out of the fruit that grows out of our life and those roots tend to be um a belief in something other than the good news mm -hmm. and and i think uh for me if i was going to give them a title um and because i'm a, I'm a preacher it's got to be alliterated <laughs> <laughs> alliteration but we want you to remember and it does sound kind of cool when you have an alliteration. <laughs> um, appetites, mm -hmm. ambitions, mm -hmm. and approval. Yeah, I think are the three things that, for me, stand out. It's the three temptations of Christ in the right, wilderness. Right, right. Um, it shows up all over the text, but um, appetites, just just longing to experience something, and sometimes it's to escape, and sometimes it's to immerse and numb and but I'm longing for something out there to make me feel good about what mm -hmm. I feel in mm -hmm. here, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that, that would be more the appetites, the approval. Oh my gosh, that's um, this desire to, to be affirmed, to uh, cover, to, to build an identity around something. And maybe I feel shame about something in my background. Um, right, right. Uh, you know, but I... I, I I've, I've got to find a way to, to establish myself and be able to look in the mirror and say, you know, mm -hmm. gosh darn it, people like you, mm -hmm. you know, right, it's right, small. Um, and then, and then, of course, the uh, the ambition piece, which is you know, um, building something, doing something, being in control, having a measure of a, a sense of of value and knowing what's coming tomorrow and knowing how people um, can see you because you kind of manufactured this this life, so to speak, and built it with your own two hands. And so I, I think those three things, um, and to get even more kind of psychic in that sense um, or, or deal with the psychology of that, it's, it's those root um, motivations in the negative sense of guilt, shame, and fear. Right, it just drives right. our life. Right, right. drives our life. Uh, when you study the Enneagram, like those are the negative motivations at the base of all the nine personality types, mm -hmm. and they manifest in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. Right, you got nine mm -hmm. personality types, mm -hmm. and then each of them have subtypes, and 
and all that stuff. Not to preach the gospel of the Enneagram today. <laughs> but I think there is something in which we can be so defined, our life, our daily existence, um, with stuff that's buzzing at such a low frequency, we're not even aware of it. Mm -hmm. And we're just busy doing the thing that, that um, makes us feel significant or makes us feel worth or, or drives us forward. And we don't even take time to address the intercausal roots of the fruit of our life. And, and that's belief in, um, I need this to free me from guilt. I need this. I need to do this to free me from guilt. I need to do this to build a life free from shame where I know who I am and I'm comfortable in my own skin. I, I need to do something in order to uh, protect myself in the future and secure the future I really long for. And, and so to you know get rid of the fear that may otherwise be driving my life. And um, that's, I think, in so many ways, whether we're talking about just decisions we make that are so often destructive in our own lives to mm -hmm. the macro things we see in our world and the headlines every day, um, just the wars and famine and things that world hunger that we could easily solve if the guilt, shame, and fear were not driving us to do things yeah. that yeah. block us, uh, our ability yeah. from living into what the Holy Spirit is trying to free us from yeah. and free us for. Yeah, yeah this, this, um, this clenching of fist, yeah. you know, that, that as long as we're holding things like this, mm -hmm. gripping them, we're never free to receive, right? Mm -hmm. Like whatever it is that God has for us. And so to your point, if I'm clenching onto something like this, it's because I think the best that there is to life is what I already possess. Yeah. Like there's nothing better. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more that could be given to me. That's right. So I've got to hold on to this for dear life. Yes. Because if I lose this, I've lost everything and mm -hmm. my life might as well just be over. And so when you come, like you're saying, to the sec you know, to the second half of life or the next the next movement mm -hmm. in this wherever you're at. Yeah. Whatever stage you're in. Yeah. yeah. When when you come to that, it's it's like there's there's some trepidation. You're mm -hmm. standing on the on the precipice of of, you know, like the, the image I have in my mind right now is, you know, Joshua and Israel standing on the brink of the Jordan and there lies promise yeah. with all of its challenges, its walls, its giants, its there. giants mm -hmm. and, and all of its grapes and all of its lush vineyards yeah. and all of it, all of that. Milk and honey. Milk and honey. Yeah. Um, and, and you stand on the brink of that and you're confronted with really... Um, uh, you know, you're being defined by that moment. Do I believe mm -hmm. everything God has promised yeah. in regards to who God is mm -hmm. and in regards to who God says I am? Yeah. Or do I not? Right. And it's the yeah. it's that flashpoint. It's that it's where it gets fleshed out, mm -hmm. or you go back into the wilderness and become just a rotting cadaver. That's it. Bones bleached in the sun. Wow. You have a choice. Yeah. Right? That's it. And God's saying, here's who I am. Mm -hmm. Here's who you are. Let's do this. So mm -hmm. you're saying in this season of your life, you know, you're standing at this point like there's something that's next. Yeah. And you're hearing God speak to you, you know, mm -hmm. open, open up, open up your hands. Yeah. Open up, you know, um, trust me. Trust me. How could, okay, this is me. Yeah. This is, I know everyone out there. It's so easy to talk about, yeah, just open up them hands. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the process, though, mm -hmm. of actually opening up your hands and seeing the miracle, mm -hmm. you know, for, for those of us that have been traveling together in Lighthouse, we've talked, the, we've used the metaphor of the dragonfly, you know, it's that molting six mm -hmm. to 15 times it goes through a molting process mm -hmm. before it ever can take flight. Yeah. It's yeah. shedding and shedding. And so there's this over process. So what is that? What, what is that for us? How do we get to that point of, and I know you have the answer because I've heard you say it, so I'm just throwing you a softball here. <laughs> do I have the answer to this? <laughs> um, how does one get from the clenched fist, mm -hmm. clenching your finances, clenching your relationships, clenching your own sense of who you are and, and your ego, mm -hmm. you know, rising up at work and you have to defend yourself and you get argumentative and you walk away and you're like, God, why did I say that? Yeah. You're clenching all these things and yet mm -hmm. there's so much more. How do you get from this to this? Such a good question. I, 
Um, I'll tell you what you don't do. <laughs> That's where we'll start. <laughs> you don't just force your fingers open. Mm. Pause right there. It's time out for a shout. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so that's so been a lot of my life. Good. Yeah, man. It's been just, you know. Yeah. Just trying to get that finger open. Yes. Man. So good. There and there are so many ways we try to pry it open. Mm -hmm. You know? Because we know we it's shame the right ourselves. Thing. Yep. You know, we guilt ourselves, or we allow someone else to shame us or mm -hmm. guilt us. Or we allow fear to be the thing. If I don't do this, then what's gonna happen? You right. know. Yeah, and and then the means it it it, it just it's a vicious cycle because yeah. you're continually being propelled by the guilt and the shame and the fear yeah. that have driven you to this place in the first place. Right, right. And what will happen is you'll open your hands and close them around something else other than pause right there for timeout <laughs> number two <laughs> because that's what's happening here. You're going to retract. Yeah, and it's going to be okay. So I let go of anger. Yeah. But now I've grabbed onto judgmentalism around everybody else that's angry. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> you know, so there's just something else I grip mm -hmm. and I use that to beat people up with or beat myself up with. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so, so if we just are prying our fingers off of something, they're in this, they're in that posture. They're going to come back and grasp something yeah. else. Well, it's similar to like, we used to play a game when we were kids where you like, you have somebody do this for a very long time and then you have them open their hands, but then they can't keep them open. Their fingers yes. naturally go back. Yes. Yes. It's reflective. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, um, I again, this is what I'm processing though, so I don't. I may have a theological answer. Don't you love answer. the honesty? <laughs> I may have a theological answer, but it may not be something I've fully learned to practice yet myself. But I'm learning to just um, get my heart to a place where I can trust that the reality that God wants to bring is so far better than the reality I'm clinging to. Because then yeah, yeah. I, I can yeah. get to a place where I can uh, surrender to him, his will. Um, I can surrender to the voice who says you're enough mm -hmm. in your brokenness. Mm -hmm. My son, his righteousness is so perfect mm -hmm. and he loves you so much and you're so loved. You are the beloved. Yeah. So you can, you can start to let go of those things that you've been like clinging to for your identity to yeah. kind of feed that approval thing and mm -hmm. cover your shame. Mm -hmm. the, the fig leaves in yeah. the garden, so to speak. And you can start to let go of that, but only when you can really at a heart level, as, as the Holy Spirit enables you to believe that, man, I am enough because the voice who created me, the, the Father who loved me, He says, I'm enough. And that's so much more valuable mm -hmm. than all the other voices I've been clinging to, yeah. you know? So, like, just to, to follow the shame trope, you know, that's like, that's the only way I can let go. Um, the security stuff, the things I've been um, trying so hard to control in uh, the, the ambition yeah, piece, yeah. right? That's so built on fear oftentimes. And and I'm clinging to those things, uh, whether it be a uh, low hanging fruit here, like the 401k or, you know, the six figure income or, you know, just like my portfolio. But but there's a lot of other stuff too that we, we can cling on to that um, we feel like we're we have some measure of control in our daily lives. It might just be the OCD routines. Well, how do you, how do you conquer that? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it starts by trusting God actually is in control. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the God who yeah. is in control loves me. Yeah. And he gave himself for me. He let go in some sense of all the things that he was in control of. He gave himself up and said, you know, into your hands. I commit my spirit. He yeah. opened his yeah. hands up yes. and nails were yes. placed into them so that we could trust him that, that he would free, who gave himself for us. Yeah. How would he not along with him also freely give us all things? Mm -hmm. Scripture says, mm -hmm. you know, so I, if he would give everything for me, can I trust that if I open these hands up, what I would receive is so much better than what I'm letting go of, you yeah. know? And, yeah. And on and on. I, yep. Yep. I, you know, to bring this into a place of like message, and I differentiate a teaching and a sermon and a message mm. from the timing of something, mm. right? Mm -hmm. They're all true. Yeah. They can all be based on truth. They can all speak a truth. But a message is timely. 
Mm. Like it speaks to a specific time. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this is, and I think what you're saying is hitting something for, for many of us right now, because we're walking through un unprecedented, the past four years have been unprecedented in so many ways. Yeah. Man. Pandemic. Yep. So that triggers all kinds of fear for us. And then we hear there's, you know, another outbreak or whatever. And then we have all these emotions. And for those of us that have lost someone to, to COVID-19, there's, there's fear that comes mm -hmm. with that, that's packaged with that. Then we go through the political unrest. Right. Yeah. The 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 um, the race the rampant racism the, the the injustices that are all around us and we feel like the entire world has been flipped upside down and it's been shaken and everything's just falling. Yeah. There's nothing secure. Mm. You know, there there it's it's been a complete um, uh, like like almost a deconstruct social yeah. deconstruction. Yeah. Things are just falling apart. The things that we yeah. and. And we come through like the past two weeks, just the past two weeks, and you're watching the market. So when you said 401k, yeah. you know, your or retirement, or- That's what's on my mind. <laughs> yeah, you're thinking, if this keeps going this yeah. way, how, how will I make it? Yeah. How will I, you know, and so we may think, well, I had planned on being able to do this during my retirement, and go here during my retirement, mm -hmm. and, have, and that's the, and we have in our mind, that this is the only way I'll be happy. Yeah. I, if I can have all of these things, yeah. you know, when I retire, this is the only way I'll be secure, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This is the only way I'll be in control. Mm -hmm. Is is my four hundred one k says I'm in control? Yep. Like so, which goes back to the three A's that you were talking about, right? Yeah. So, I think for you know what Vince is saying here is so timely, especially when we've seen what the market has done this week alone. Mm -hmm. It's been flipped upside down, mm -hmm. and so many people are just pulling their hair out like what has just happened I've lost my retirement I've mm -hmm. lost my and you and you feel that sense of like you've been gripping it right yeah. to go back to that that image you're clutching it you're holding and all of a sudden it's being pried out of your hands yeah and it can lead you to being frantic or mm -hmm. a developing ad addictions mm -hmm. looking to something to help you escape or cope mm -hmm. with it and what I'm hearing you say is there's an opportunity here to, one, identify with Christ. Mm -hmm. That in that moment of letting go, mm -hmm. like not, not holding his life as so valuable that I want 60 years, 70 years, 80 years like everybody else. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like, no, my 30 is enough mm. to transform the world when it's given to the Father. Mm-hmm. As opposed to, well, if I had just 30 more, imagine what I could do. Right. Oh, that's so good, Jeff. And yeah. so he lets it go. Yeah. Let's it go in forgiveness. Father, forgive them. Mm -hmm. Let's it go in pure surrender. Let's it go in authenticity. I am thirsty. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Let's it go in pure surrender. Father, into your hands. Mm -hmm. Let's it go in completion. It's completed. It's mm -hmm. finished. Yeah. You know, and I think all of these these vocalizations of it is can speak to us about, you know, so when I'm at this stage of my 401k is such, my health mm -hmm. is such, um, my relational, um, my relationships feel like they're going through a bankruptcy, mm -hmm. um, that, that we can hold on to, there's another life a God life mm -hmm. that comes not in spite of the suffering. Right. Yeah. Not, you know, because not in spite of the fact that we lost all of our money and all of a sudden God's going to give us a, a secret insight into the next stock that's going to help us, sorry, yeah. put our trust back in that's money. Oof, yes. Yeah. Hold on to that insight. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. He's, he's giving us something so glorious of like, I don't need that anymore to secure me because while I'm doing this, yeah. I'm not realizing that God's doing this. That's right. With me. He's holding on to me. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm clutching I mean, to things. Hand. Right. I'm clutching to things while he's holding That's to it. me. Yeah. Well, and you get such a beautiful picture of that on the cross because Jesus says he's letting go. He's saying into your hands, mm -hmm. I commit mm -hmm. my spirit. I'm giving you my very self. And the gospel is the story of um, self-sacrifice mm -hmm. and service. And, you know, just before that, he's getting down his hands and knees and washing feet, you know? The, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. the world. Yep. And, and 
So it's, it's this beautiful picture of laying life down, of opening your hands, death to self, as it were, followed by resurrection. Mm -hmm. And I think what we tend to do, because we're so terrestrial, and we're so focused on the here and now, and we develop such tunnel vision, especially when we're cleaving to things, that we only see the first half of that equation. Yes, you know? yeah, and so true. We're fixated so on true. the death, we're fixated on the suffering, we're yep. fixated on the cross. Mm -hmm. And we miss, uh, first of all, the fellowship of the cross. Mm -hmm. Take up your cross and follow me, right? And yep. we, we also miss the, um, the eternal life that awaits. Mm -hmm. We miss, um, and not just in, in the forever after, although I think we need to make a lot more of that than we tend to in mm -hmm. practical sermons in Christian theology currently. Because, um, what does what's Paul say, if, uh, is it, correct me here, if we have hope in this life only, <laughs> we are um, above all people most miserable. Yeah, right. right. Um, our, we do have this hope that awaits on the other side of things, you know, that uh, whether you're talking about philosophers like Baruch Spinoza, talking about subspecies, mm -hmm. eternitatis, and eternal perspective, mm -hmm. or whether you're talking about uh, somebody who practically dealt with um, life in that way and survived the Holocaust, like Viktor Frankl, and then developed an entire uh, theory in, 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 in therapy and psychology around that principle. Yes, right? yes, so it's, yes. it's, it bears fruit in yep. this life. Yep. And it's that there's so much more that awaits. Yep. Therefore, you know, God wants to give you so much more. Can you trust? Can you open up? Can you yeah. let go? Um, and until you can have a vision for that and all that he's bringing, you're going to cleave. But it's not just the, the forever after after. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's also the here and now that God wants to usher that eternal life into. That God I wants to bring that. healing into the yeah. world through. Mm -hmm. But we can't be those instruments when we shut off the flow. It's like a it's like a water hose, you know. You shut the the valve off, nothing's flowing. But if you could just like open your hands to receive from Him and open your hands to give to others, just like you were mm -hmm. saying, as pastors, we're called to open ourselves up to a relationship with God and to one another. Mm -hmm. If we could all do that as ministers, yeah, in yeah. this world, yeah, um, then that eternal life, that good news, that grace would flow through His people in such a way that it would bring healing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as I look back over church history and some of the atrocities and brokennesses that we kind of shy away from, those are just instances where people closed up their hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Well said. Yeah. Well said. Um, I'm going to have you uh, lead us just in a, in a, in a prayer here mm. um, to to Lighthouse. I would just like to say, just all of this, I think, is timely in the sense of. You know, for so long we were kind of, remember we were holding on to the building, we're like clutching it, mm -hmm. and I know some of you are praying, you were interceding, I know a lot of you were fasting, fasting in ways you had never fasted, you're like, Pastor, I'm fasting because I don't want us to lose this building, and so we were holding on to it, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, for me personally, I just got to the point, I, I, I had let go, mm -hmm. I was like, whatever, you know, and, and many of you had not quite yet let go. <laughs> And that's okay, it's beautiful, because you can't pry your, as Vince was saying, you can't pry your fingers off of it. It, it has to become almost a natural thing where your, your own heart goes through this change. And that happened to us, right? We started walking that change, and then look what happened. We let go of it, and then God does this other miracle with it, and we're still, we mm -hmm. still don't know. Yeah. We still don't know, at a corporate level, why. Mm. What, he's, what God's up to. But here we are, mm. this Sunday, celebrating the fact that you know we closed we're with a different bank we're with someone that has said look we'll never foreclose on you you know we're we're good for this we believe in your ministry and so um that's something for us to like give witness to yeah we could god could have like kept teasing us along with this other bank and i would have been under constant stress yeah with the bank that we were with. Yep. Every month getting a letter. Mm -hmm. We're going to foreclose. Every month someone calling me, like not monthly, weekly. Mm -hmm. You know, what's going on? I want to see your numbers. I want to see the, you know, mm -hmm. we're going to get, we're going to increase interest rates. We're going to add another fee. Um, and now we're with someone like, we don't, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. We don't add fees. We don't have a DSCR covenant. We don't, that's just not who we are. We're trying to help God's kingdom grow. That's awesome. Man. So that's just a little like letting go. I think we're seeing that on a corporate level. 
and seeing what God does. And then, as mm -hmm. Vince is describing, on an, on an individual level. I don't know what it is that you're maybe grasping at mm -hmm. or what you have clenched in mm -hmm. your fist. I don't know what that is. Um, and you may not even know. Mm -hmm. You may feel the, just the anxiety of it, um, the, the fear, uh, the shame. You may feel all of that. Mm -hmm. um, but as, as, as Vince is praying today, um, I, I, I pray that you would allow the Spirit to do a work in your heart mm. um, to where you feel that the hands naturally just kind of coming open mm. in beautiful, loving, joyful surrender. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Let's pray. And, you know, actually, if you would, mm -hmm. I mean, pose, yeah. um, as, as simply as you might, if you would join me in this, let's just open our hands and just have this posture of receiving, even if it's a posture of, of faith that we're saying, like, in my heart, I'm not even there yet. I'm still clutching, mm -hmm. but I want to be open to all that God has for me. Would you just open your hands as a sign of trust and faith and say, God, I, I, I do believe. I believe that what you have is better. Help me, help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <sighs> Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Thankful for the life that you've granted us. Thankful for the breath in our lungs. For this, so many gifts that are often unaccounted for in our own hearts. And God, we ask you to help us to trust you with opening our hands and opening our hearts and our minds to all that you have for us. To believe that what you have is better. I'm, and I'm not just praying for everybody else who's hearing this. I'm praying for my own heart too as I step into this season. And I'm asking you to do something miraculous and beautiful and far more um, amazing than anything I could do on my own. What I've tried to build. What I've tried to do with my own two hands mm -hmm. to this point in my life. I'm laying it down. I'm surrendering. So much of the gospel is that it's not about what we do for you to earn it and to make it happen and to earn an identity and to cover up the guilt from our past, the shame of our present and the fear of our future, but to relinquish yes. and trust yes. and receive your work on our behalf, to receive that you loved us before time began. You set your affection upon us. You sent your son for us. You had a plan. The Bible calls him the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. You had a plan to exact salvation and joy and hope and eternal life. And I get to be a part of that. Help me not to settle for um, just the small breadcrumbs that I've been clinging to, but to receive the full meal around the table that you came to provide. Uh, if we take communion, Lord, I pray that we would just receive freely from your grace and your sacrifice for us and remember uh, that we are in your hands this whole time, just like Jesus was, just like every time we lay down our lives, that's not the end of the mm -hmm. story, it's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because in the gospel, death is always followed by resurrection and, and exaltation. Mm -hmm. It's so much better than anything we could have done on our own. So give us the faith to trust you with that. To be able to open our hands and lay down. And to receive all that you have for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, yeah. Vince. Thank you, Abba. Uh, thank you, Nancy, for allowing Vince to be here. <laughs> On your vacation, uh, still doing some work. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you, thank honor, you man. so much. Um, just by way of some updates here, um, I'll be back this coming Sunday in person. So we'll continue uh, fellowshipping and celebrating, having a wonderful time as we make our way through the rest of summer together. Uh, but I did want to give you all a wonderful update. We received news on. Uh, Wednesday that the loan had closed. Now I I Woo! gotta tell you, yeah, <laughs> I gotta tell you, it did it, it. There there were some last minute 
plot thickening moments where they were demanding more money. The bank <laughs> were demanding more money, and I, I was just like, God. Again, it was just it was a it was like let go, let go, yeah, let go. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not just like a one time thing. It's like you come back, you you get a little hope, and then you clink. Yeah. You, know, you 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 clench your fist around something. So. Nice thing, yeah. Um, but on Wednesday, I got a beautiful text from Daryl from the Westland Investment Foundation, and he was just like, "Congratulations, you you know the loan has closed." And then he said, "We cut our fee in half because we want to we wanted to give you extra money to be able to do any renovations that you need to do." Stop it! And I was like, "Gift That's... upon gift upon gift." Let's then go. he was just like, "Praise God! Let's build the kingdom in San Francisco." Yes. And um, so anyway, I wanted to celebrate that with you. As well as just, you know, looking back up and going, thank you, Father. I have no idea what you have in mm -hmm. store, what you're up to. But I'm along. I'm along for the adventure. I'm mm -hmm. along for the ride. And so, um, yeah. So it's something for all of us to get to celebrate and join in. To that end, here's how you can participate. Mm -hmm. One, you can say thank you to God with me. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you can do that in your prayer time. You can just open up your heart and allow your heart to be filled with the warmth of love and and genera uh, and gratitude towards God. Mm -hmm. uh, another way that you can get involved is uh, continuing to support financially. You can do that, yeah. and um, you can you know hit the, the give button if you'd like to. Mm -hmm. I know several people have joined in giving um, like an alignment pledge because we get nine months of interest free. Uh, mortgage oh, that's so um, cool. of just interest only so no yeah. principal payment Wow and so um, that they're they're hoping that during that time the church continues to grow mm -hmm. right because the pandemic's over and so yep um, if you want to help us get to that point you can you can give that way um, there's I think there's a pledge there's a pledge card on the website you can you know anyway um, continue to support and give I I, I do want to say this like and I don't know I'm maybe I can get some tips from you on, on how you do this but I get reports like just as we're stewarding mm -hmm. what God brings in I get reports um, sometimes uh, weekly sometimes at least twice a month mm -hmm. right I get a report of a given the, the, what's coming in because we're having like here's what's coming in here's what we had to pay yeah. here's the expense report the income report the P&L mm -hmm. and um, I get that report and I see your names on that you know mm -hmm. and you I want you to know mm -hmm. every time I see a name and whether it's five dollars five hundred mm. whatever it is yeah I whisper gratitude mm -hmm. to God for you mm. every it, it's just kind of like a it's kind of like a natural thing that happens it's not like yeah. I'm intentionally up to it right, it's right. like oh God thank you oh thank you for that thank yeah. you for that and um, I know some of you are on the recurring you probably don't realize this that this is going on I'm doing yeah. this constantly you know it also brings me it reminds me of those that don't have Mm -hmm. financially right. to give That's right. um, but they're giving in other ways you give with your time mm -hmm. um, you give with prayer uh, or you're maybe just in a posture of just uh, some of us aren't haven't got to a place where we can give anything yeah because we're in that place of receiving that's right we have to receive before we can ever give the healings happening. Yeah. yeah yeah and so I'm thankful for you actually being open mm -hmm. to being in a receiving posture yeah. you know receiving from God so um, and I, I wanted to say that just thank you to all of you for your your faithfulness, your um, allowing Christ to give through you mm -hmm. to Lighthouse mm -hmm. is, is a wonderful gift. I told uh, Daryl, um, I, I wrote him a little letter this week. Uh, this is the guy that, that does our that did the loan for us with Westland Investment okay. Foundation. Okay. He's a senior loan officer. And I I just said, man, I, I got a huge lump in my throat. I feel like I'm about to, to cry. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's the oddest thing. I'm... I'm seeing how the Western Investment Foundation have given. Mm -hmm. like they, they, and, and what's moving me most about this is that what somebody did 2,000 years ago mm -hmm. in giving everything mm -hmm. has such an incredible ripple effect mm -hmm. that here we are 2,000 years in a different country, different economic system, different political system, different world all together. Yeah. And it's still impacting people to be giving that's it and compassion I said I, I'm just overwhelmed with gratitude yeah for God flowing through you that's right in this way so um, that's so yeah good, man. so anyway we're looking mm -hmm. forward to getting back and getting going again and uh, hopefully we can get this guy up to come share with us one week get him and his I'd lovely love to. bride to yeah. come up and she would and, love to too yeah 
San it's Fran. Been a, it's been a while. It's been too long. Yeah, I mean, we had the pandemic. We have good reasons for it, but yeah, uh, we'll, we'll we'll make it happen. So if you'd get your uh, and to use all and to you also ready, I'm gonna give you the benediction. Send you out the benediction and uh, into this lovely Sunday and uh, mm -hmm. enjoying both God's presence and God's people and those that have yet to discover that they're God's people. That's right. <laughs> May the Lord bless and keep you. May his gospel give you peace. May his spirit fill you with joy. May you be his disciples, making mm -hmm. disciples. May his face shine upon you. And may yeah. you be courageous ones receiving his kingdom in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Bless you guys. Thank you. <laughs>